Hello everybody, Steffi here from The Makers. Um, sorry for the slight delay, I uh, was desperately trying to find my earpiece so I can talk to um, Emma at the other end and I couldn't find it so I'm actually wearing my AirPods today. But hey ho, at least I've got her in my ear in case you need to um, communicate anything directly to me today on um, the 14th of um, September 2021 at 1pm UK time, ready for part two to give this um, sad looking pumpkin here some colour. And um, obviously we will be doing that and we finished the pumpkin today so that we have a friend for this one here. All made from our pumpkin pack, which um, has uh, all we've used so far is the, the uh, core wool that comes in the pack. And we've got lots of juicy colors that we can use to color him in. And there'll be loads of wool left to make more pumpkins, maybe of a smaller size, maybe tiddly little ones like that. Um, or maybe something in between like the garland behind me and the ones that are sitting up here as well. So uh, let's just have a look who's here today um, because some of you have been busy making the shape and um, some of you may be here for the first time. Remember that all of our YouTube live streams, they stay on YouTube. You can watch them over and over or if you haven't ever watched them, you can certainly watch um, and go back in time. And um, best of all, you can pause me in case you need to catch up with uh, some of the live stream um, make-alongs. So if you've missed out on anything and you need to watch it again, then you can do that anytime in the in, um, in the future too. Right, let's just say see who's here today. We've got Erica here. Um, it it was your birthday, Erica. Happy birthday in ret in retrospect or um, what's the word? Belated birthday. Do though I did wish you a happy birthday when it was your birthday. Um, she's out in the garden, hanging in ha hanging in her ha in my hammock. So um, she's obviously hanging out in a hammock, obviously. Uh, watching you make a pumpkin. Oh, that's nice. Life is good. Life is good indeed. I tell you what, we haven't been out of the cloud all day yet. So we've got a really, really grey day. We're literally, we're quite high up and we're in the clouds. I have, I, I can't see. It's like fog everywhere. I can't even see like 20, 30 meters ahead. So no hanging out in a hammock for me. It'd be very chilly and, and uncomfortable. Um, Gina is here. Um, she's in a very wet Lincolnshire, pretty simple, pretty similar to our uh, Gloucestershire uh, weather then. Catherine is there. Hi, everyone. Rain has stopped now here. Got woken up by a wet cat this morning. Yeah, the rain, it was absolutely heaving down this morning. Uh, the rain has stopped, but it seems we are still in the cloud. Diane is there. Um, hello, Diane. Ashley is there. Carol, um, no idea what it's like in Ireland. Probably rains, as apparently it rains there all the time. And... Um, Vampire Venom is there. Um, oh, looking forward to a birthday stream. Is it your birthday? Happy birthday to you. Um, nice, nice, nice month to have a birthday. My daughter's birthday is um, this week, Sunday. Yes, Sunday. So she was only ten, only nine days late. But um, I was glad she wasn't born on 9-11. Um, Jane is there. Hi, Jane. Um drying up here but quite dull won't be dull for long when Steffi arrives oh I'm here now well I'm not feeling very bright myself today but I'm trying my very best to um cheer you all up um Ava says thumbs up done already she's done the thumbs up everybody thumbs up not literally um pointing it at the screen but press the button on your screen that says uh, that has the thumbs up button um, are they in her ears? Yes, they are in my ears now. Um, happy birthday, Vampire Venom, says Carol Wise. Um, no, well, they weren't in my ears then. Diana says, hello, Steffi and Emma and all friends of the fluff. Um, I wonder what the weather's like on the Isle of Mull. Heather is there. Hello, Heather. Sandra is there. Hello, Sandra. Bridget in Australia is there. Um, Marion is there. Uh, yes, it's a week indeed seems to go so quickly. Helen is there. Hi, Helen. Sanshraf is there. Hello, Sanshraf. Alex is there. Julie is there. And Donna is there. Sorry to be late. You're not the only one, Donna. I was late as well. Right. And um, let's uh, get started. First of all, as always, we have a prize to give away today. And today's prize, you can win yourself a McHoggy family pack. If you have never heard about them, that they were our advent project last year, and uh, you were able to make all four of them, including the, the little surprise um, baby Hoggy that um, Heather is holding there. And um, you get the pack to make 
all five little hoggies. They're all naked, so if you want clothes for them, you can re-watch our live streams. But the more to the point to win it, tell us something. Um, tell us how you can turn something negative into something positive. So it's in the in the same sort of spirit of um, instead of saying a glass is half empty, you can say a glass is half full. Or anything else that pops into your head where you can turn something negative into something positive. It could be something like every cloud has a silver lining um, on that theme as well. So if you've had a negative experience, maybe something positive came from it. Anything like that um, we, we will take today. Pop it into the comments and then towards the end of the live stream, um, we will draw a winner and announce it either live here today, Tuesday the 14th of September on YouTube or on Thursday. We'll pop it into the comments as we're restreaming this on Facebook at 7 p.m. So um, yeah, that's basically it. And I've I've wrapped up today because it is actually quite chilly and um, and I thought double layers today. That's what it is. But pumpkin time. Right, so we've got as far as making our nice uh, core. It's still quite soft. I explained last time that I'm not somebody who um, shapes the pumpkin to perfection before I add the colors. I do usually, I do this when I add the colors onto it. And so now we've got to decide what colors we're going to use from this lovely pile of colors here. So you can mix colors. And this is just a gentle reminder that... Um, that's entirely possible. You can mix colors to such an extent that you could make up a completely new color. Um, not maybe with this color range, you're a little bit limited, but say if you didn't have orange and you wanted to make orange and all you had was yellow and red, you can make your own orange by mixing the, these colors together. For this purpose here, we're using these colors so that you can get a, a more natural look um, because there are very few things in nature that are one solid color. So you could, for example, you could use um, the golden yellow and you could use the orange. This is our New Zealand merino golden yellow and this is our mountain sheep orange. You can put these together and you can mix them. The reason why I've chosen those two is we have actually got now a ready mix of these two, which is our golden orange. And it's very much like this. It's not these two exact colors mixed together, but you can actually buy the golden orange wool mix um, as a as a ready-made color for you. So um, sometimes that's quite nice to know because then you don't need to buy two new whole colors, but you can um, just use one that's already mixed and um, and save yourself some pennies that way. So you can mix the colors. This is how we're mixing the colors um, with, with our fingers. Or if you have got um, little carders, then you can do that too. I'll show you that in a, mi in a minute as well. Now, the, the, the way that we are dressing or um, coloring in our pumpkin is this is my, the top and this is the bottom, but I'm going to show it to you so that I, you can see it from the side. And what is in what is good to um to do is that you color it in the the way that the sort of the seams or you imagine the the way that the wool runs so lay the wool out and then you just use your single felting needle if you like <clears throat> and i always stab it in in that direction as well so you're you're almost sort of creating an invisible line or maybe it's even visible to go from the top round to the base and that's how you stab your needle. For this you can use your multi-tools so if you have uh, your three needle felting tool at hand then um, use that and what you're doing right now is you're not just coloring in your pumpkin you're also um, firming it up still because you're stabbing the wool not just into the surface but you're still stabbing the wool so that it um, goes all the way through the uh, the pumpkin and then you can use more um, colors, different colors. You, you can use them all. You can make a nice mottled effect if you like, but always paint it literally from um, the top to the bottom or the bottom to the top, whichever way around, and then just felt it on and let the sort of wool take over in a way. Um, so have nice and soft transitions between different colors. If you are using different colors, there's a bit of dried up grass in there. Let's take that out. And you're working your way all along the pumpkin. I'm going to go onto the large view in a minute because I've um, because I think you can actually see it almost better on a large screen. Try and cover up all these um, uh, little um, 
the little white patches there and just um, slowly but surely I'm a great believer that less is always more with needle felting so don't pile it on also you'll be using lots and lots of your wool when that's not necessary just stab it on as you need it and um, and we're still firming up our pumpkin doing this and you're still shaping it so whilst some people um, make the perfect white shape first I like cutting a few corners and starting to color the pumpkin in before it has got its final shape and um, and that's just an, a way that I do it. Sometimes it's quite nice to add a little bit of green into it. Um, you could even mix the green with the yellow to make it more of a vibrant green and, um, and that is because sometimes pumpkins when they've been lying on one side where the sun doesn't get to they actually stay a little bit green on that side. Oh, you can't see me mixing this. Sorry, guys. And um, and that you can then mix in with a tiny bit of um, orange so that it, it's kind of green but not completely green. And maybe there is a na more natural sort of side of the pumpkin that's a little bit flatter because there is often a flat side to a pumpkin too. And um, you can just felt that on um, to sort of represent that greener patch that hasn't quite got the sun where the pumpkin's been lying on to make a more realistic look of the pumpkin. But the, the beauty about this is really in the mixing of the wool and getting that um, the lovely sort of transition going between the different shades of orange. Um, if that's the look you want, there's nothing wrong if you wanted it to be a more solid um, orange color or solid you could even make a white pumpkin. It did occur to me that if you did make a white pumpkin, you just would have to put some green um, seams into it. And we're gonna add the seams later. I'm still felting down the, the wool. So you can see this is gonna take a little while to color it in and I'm going to color that in while I'm going to be on the large screen. There we are. So not not too much to go, but it's going to take a little while to color this in. So I'm going to do this while you're um, looking at me this way. So what what are we? What have we been up to? Well, we've been really busy bees. We've gone. Um, we've we're we've got a date in the diary now when we're going to pack the advent calendars. Um, so so you can you can um imagine that we have got um a lot of boxes to pack with the advent calendar um, ingredients and we're drumming up all the help we can get because we are allocating believe it or not all the little parcels are ready to go but we're allocating three to four days to get this packed up and um we probably need three to four people to pack up all these boxes over the next um well, we're, we're, we're aiming for the end of September to get it all packed up so that we can post them out a little bit earlier at the beginning of October rather than the end of October. Now, um, somebody's just asked whether you can use twisted medium needles in your um, needle tool. And yes, you can. In fact, I've got one of my, not that one. I've got one of them has got twisted need. Oh yeah, it has got twisted needles in it, but only two. That will come in handy later when we do the seam. Yeah, you can load it up with different needles. So the twisted medium needles will be really nice and powerful to work on your pumpkin. Um, yeah, good idea. Let's um, bear that in mind. So twisted needles loading up into your multi tool is absolutely fine. What have I got in here? Oh, I've got a whole mix in my prim needle felting tool. Um, so. Yeah, the prim tool, the prim tool is definitely has got the prim tool has a mix in there. I think I've got some twisted, some not, just a very eclectic mix in there. So yeah, definitely try it and then see what it um, feels like. You can always take them out and replace them, but I would definitely not put fine needles into the prim tool. I would um, stick with medium or with coarse needles. Um, it is quite um, a, a tool that, that needs to work quite hard on a large surface. So yes, so I keep coloring in my pumpkin. So what else have we been up to? We are getting ready for face-to-face um, -face shows. We've got lots coming up. We're going away next week. 
So next um, next week, let's talk about next week because we've got a new live stream coming up. Let's have a look what the live streams that are coming up. So we start, we're doing The Little Witch next week. I'm really looking forward to that. That's day before I'm heading off to a show. So I will just be doing that. And then um, the next day we'll be on the road going to Exeter to set up for the Creative Craft Show. But you have The um, the Little Witch to look forward next Tuesday at 1 p.m. on YouTube and then repeating this on the 23rd on Facebook at 7 p.m. and then after that we have two days of a uh, toadstool house which I'm also looking forward to and then uh, we've we've changed our plan a little bit we have um, decided to put the curly hedgehog into our live streams he's, he's been such a popular project um, we're doing workshops at um, at shows for him but they actually they're selling out um, so quickly that uh, we thought let's let's have him as a live stream for those who can't come to shows we don't want you to miss out so he's going to be a pack that we are currently putting together you can't buy him yet but you will be able to buy him um, um, very very soon Emma is probably going to tell me when but um, he's going to be hopefully available by the end of this week so that you can get ready to uh, have your pack and and also I should also just say that Emma has just reminded me the toadstool house on the 28th of September and the 5th of October we're doing two one and a half hour sessions on this one because it is a big project it's actually it's much bigger than the pumpkin so we will need a little bit longer for the toadstool house just to remind you you can it's a bit of a stash stash buster if you've got some core wool um just use that um, um and then if you've got lots of greens and a larger amount of um red you can use that too but if you want to um make the toadstool with our products entirely then the enchanted forest mix is perfect for the decoration to together with um, about um, 30 grams of lanolin rich core and 20 grams of red poppy red now the poppy red is out of stock at the moment sorry guys we are awaiting for um we're awaiting a wool order uh, this week and then it will be back in stock but as an alternative to the poppy red you could use the red variegated which is a, a really nice one you could even use a more orangey color like the um the one i'm using right now which is the the red orange it's sort of it's it, it is orange but it's also a little bit red so yes that that um that will the the poppy red will be back in stock so you should have it in time for the toadstool if you want to use that and um the little witch she's flying here she's really lovely i'm really really looking forward to making her um i can tell you that sophie's been working on um our snowy owl for um november that's the the project the makers box for november and it's looking very stunning and um and then um we have got in December, we've got the red panda coming up. And obviously in October, we've got the gorilla coming up. And I'm, I'm really, I'm loving the gorilla. He's, he is very gorilla-like. He's a, a mountain gorilla. So he's quite hairy and, um, and furry. And he's coming up in October as our maker's box. So lots and pro lots of projects that we're working on. And looking ahead towards uh, the busy time of the year, the busy crafting time of the year. If you want to start thinking about Christmas projects, then I can highly recommend our uh, Christmas bauble uh, packs. So we have two. One makes robins and um, puddings, and the other one makes reindeers and penguins. And um, they're, they're, the, the wool that you get in the uh, pack makes six baubles in total, three of, um, three of each kind. And um, it's really, really popular. We sell lots and lots of those every year because they're such lovely, easy presents um, to make. But also you can make them for yourself and decorate your tree entirely with them. So they're a really good one to watch out for as well. We've just uh, released all of our Christmas uh, kits and Christmas packs. Um, you can, if you want to make more of the same, we have also got um, tutorials available for those. So if you need reminding of how to do them or you want to watch um <clears throat> what watch want to watch a really old tutorial then look up the um the the christmas pudding and the um robin bauble have a laugh at my expense if you like um we've come a long way so um yeah which reminds me get 
people to subscribe to our channel because, um, well, we've come a long way. That's all I will say. So I'm getting round my pumpkin here, almost um, down to the other side, over halfway. And of course, I need to fill in the base as well. Remember, I'm it's going to be sitting like this. It's quite a yellowish pumpkin. You can add more colors over the top. I'm just trying to get the cover on now. It's going to be a very bright and cheerful pumpkin color here because... Um, and as I say, I need cheering up. And whilst I'm thinking about that, let's have a look at some of the comments that are coming in uh, with regards to the price and giveaway um, that you can win today. Let's see what people, what negative things people are turning into a, a positive. Okay, let's have a look. So, um, the rain... <sighs> So Gina says, the rain may be stopping me working in the garden, but the positive is I won't have to go and water the veg. Excellent. And I'm now sitting here working on a mini pumpkin from my kit. That's good. Good thinking. Donna says, there's a negative into a positive. Don't have the correct color. Make your own by mixing them. Oh, yeah, I already gave you a clue there. Um, Ashley says, would you use the twisted medium needle in the prim tool yes we've answered that you can absolutely do that every day there is a new dawn a fresh start nice one and it is true um so ashley also says turning a negative into a positive is just turning electricity backwards <laughs> why do you do this to me guys you always throw me a challenge where you can literally hear my brain ticking away um, turning a negative to a positive is just turning electricity backwards. Okay, I was really rubbish at physics at school, so I'm sure that if I was a little bit more scientific, I would probably understand that. But um, this is this is okay. I, I I you probably know what all of this is about. Just trying to find that one positive in any situation, and it makes it not so bad. Absolutely, always look for the bright side. Um, Julie says, my motto, don't put off till tomorrow what can be done today. Because if you liked it today, you can do it again tomorrow. Oh, I like that one. <laughs> um, yes, it's um, it's definitely a German saying where you where you say, don't, you know, what you can do today, um, do it today and not tomorrow. And I love that, that the reason for that is that you can do it all over again the following day if you liked it. So it's not even a chore. It's actually something, something good. Um, Donna says, if I've lived closer, I would help with the packing. Oh, we would love you to come and pack. I know. I think even Emma might make it down to um, our HQ to um, help pack. It's a good excuse to come and visit us. Um, Meg says, always look on the bright side of things. Well, that's it. I could uh, sing a tune now, um, but I won't. Um, Alicia says, hi, Alicia. Um, she loves the pumpkin garland. I, I really, I'm, I'm in love with that too. And the little, um, the little elves hanging off it. Um, so remember that this Saturday, which is the 18th of September, um, I'm going to be on Facebook giving a demo of how to make the cheeky pumpkins with the faces over on the um, on the Autumn Festival group of the Needle Felting UK um, page. So um, I'm sure Emma will put a link into the comments here, but if you can't find it um, through that, then you can go onto Facebook and search Needle Felting UK or the original Needle Felting uh, UK, I should say. On, on that group, there will be a link of how you can join the autumn festival that they're running and there'll be lots of needle felting demonstrations and fiber fiber demonstrations of all kinds and um and of course we will be there at 5 p.m so when when you've done all your shopping when you're settling down put your feet up have a cup of tea you can um watch me for half an hour to make um a naughty little pumpkin face with maybe 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 if i feel like it having snot coming out of its nose it's probably a sort of snotty day um, if we keep heading into <laughs> into this weather here in the UK at least. Um, so yes, that's happening. Um, let's see. Let's. Um, oh, um, Rose says she can't. I can't look. Um, 
um, she, I can't tell one needle from another just looking at them. Thank goodness for color codes. Yeah, well, thank you for reminding us. So for those of you who don't know, we um, code our own uh, needles with colors. Now they're very, they're just specific to the makers. I know others do that too, um, but our colors, are, they're not standardized across the whole of um, the world. They're our colors. So for example, um, I can tell now that I've got a I've got a, a pink one here, and that's our very fine um, 42 twisted needle, just to give you an example. Um, and then we have um, a, a green one here, which is our standard needle. I have to try and remember what all of these are, but you don't need to remember it because you get um, on our website, you get a, a, a color code chart and it tells you exactly what's on there. Um, and then, of course, if you buy them from us, say, for example, you buy them in these little tubes and on there, there is a sticker and it tells you that the white top one is a 36 course and that's the standard needle. So they're triangular. And then the medium one is orange and the fine is the green one. So you you should be able to um, do very simple um, identification. If you've lost a tube, then you can and you know that they're our needles, then you can pop onto our website and um, the color codes are on the page where you buy the needle so you don't need to look very far for that and it, it's just there I'm still coloring my pumpkin in it's quite therapeutic I may, may have mentioned this before um, but somebody said the other day um, why do I need to use a multi-tool and I said well because it speeds your work up and they said I don't want my work to be sped up. I am quite happy to do this slowly. And of course, I keep forgetting that not everybody is in a rush like I am all the time. Some people like um, some people just like doing this because they enjoy the process. So on Saturday, I should also say, if you're coming to watch me doing a demo, then the, of course, with all of our demos that we do for um, other other people, other organizations, there will be a discount code. Um, so it's definitely worth watching it just for that. Um, get the discount code. We haven't decided yet what it is and on what it is on, but there always is one. So yes, there will definitely be one. Now I can tell by coloring my pumpkin in, it's getting very solid which is exactly what we wanted. So you um, you see that you can actually, instead of just stubbing the white ball, you can already stub it by putting the colors on it. And it still um, does all the work that you would do by just stubbing into the white. And um, so I'm just, I'm just continuing coloring it in while I'm chatting away. And there will be lots and lots of wool left. So if you wanted to make tiny little pumpkins like these or even smaller, then you could just use the colored wool. You don't always have to have a core inside. Sometimes with a smaller project, it's actually easier to just use um, the actual wool um, without having to color it in. You can still color it in and, in, and, and make it sort of a more mottled color or a different color effect after but you don't have to always use core wool that's usually very beneficial if you're making a large project but it doesn't have to be and I can still um, shape my um, pumpkin um, as I'm doing this because there's still lots of air inside and I can um, still squish it and shape it in that way so whilst we are um, getting the advent calendars ready so there, there is definitely time to still get yours. We've, we've made extra or we've worked on the basis that we're making extra. But don't leave it too late because when we're packing, that's when we're packing. We're not, um, once we've packed, we're not, we're definitely not going to pack anymore. That would be uh, really, really foolish to do that. Um, so do uh, remember to get your... Um, to get your order in for the advent calendar if you haven't done that yet. It's, by the way, an excellent gift for a friend as well um, who might be into needle felting or maybe somebody who want, you want to get into needle felting. You can buy them an advent calendar for Christmas. It may, um, you know, they don't have to open it um, during the advent time. They can also open it afterwards. Um, or maybe you've got somebody with a birthday coming up and you've got absolutely no idea what to do for them. Maybe it's a bit of fun that you can do with a family member um, leading up to Christmas, um, opening an advent calendar together every day. Why not? And um, so just just giving you ideas why you need an advent calendar, a calendar or two or three or four, perhaps. And, um, and then, of course, the next thing is that we will be packing the advent project 
which is uh, themed animals in the woods. Um, I'll give you some details here because I've got it handy. And it is the Advent Project. You can pre-order this now. Um, it's been, the um, pre-orders have been open for the last um, couple of weeks. And um, when, the, when the stock is gone, the stock is gone. We produce um, a lot less of those. So there's, there's definitely, once that's gone, we're not, we're not adding any more into it. And it is a wall hanging of, uh, of quite a substantial size. Um, it's 60 by, I think, 60 by 36 centimeters. And you, um, you will be, every week, you will be adding to your wall hanging to make a complete picture. And it's themed an animals in the wood, but we're not giving away what animals, what wood, and what the overall look is. It's a surprise project, as the hoggies were, in a way, a little bit. There, were, there was a surprise um, in the hoggies as well, but mostly um, this one is definitely a surprise in that you don't even know what it looks like when it's finished, but you can use your imagination, and then all you need to do is trust us, because have we ever let you down? No, of course not. So um, do get the order in for the Advent project as well. Maybe it is something that you can ask as a Christmas present for you from somebody. So you might not give it to somebody, but you might, there might be people, and I'm sure there are always people who are wrecking their brains to think, what can they buy? What can they buy? So get them on board and get them buying the Advent project for you. We will support the Advent project to, throughout the time leading to uh, Christmas. So they become then our live streams on um, a, a, a regular Tuesday, even though you will be opening your next bit on a on an advent sunday we will then catch up with you on the tuesday the following tuesday leading you all the way to christmas and um, making the projects together so i'm i've now covered the whole of my pumpkin i'm just um finishing off here the base so i'll make that um i'll i'll color that in in, I'm just picked random color. I haven't really even been looking. I'm just allowing the whole pumpkin to be the color it wants to be as I'm chatting away to you. I'm just picking the colors and um, I've got my, my green side here. So I might give that a little bit more um, um, color and I'm making the, the base nice and flat now because this is where the pumpkin needs to sit on when and sometimes they don't sit flat do uh, do they sometimes they have sort of like a um their own mind of how they want to sit wonky but you're in control of your pumpkin so you can make it sit flat on its bum if you want it to be there you go and um i really wanted to make a squat pumpkin this time so i'm going to felt into it by squishing it down a bit more now what's happening and this is quite interesting if i squish it down can you see that is a crease that happens you can uh, there's two things you can do let's do this overhead so you can either as i'm squishing it 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 wants to sort of wrinkle up here you can either just um tease these few fibers open so that um, you can, as you're pulling it, pushing it, you can overlay them so that there isn't a crease. Or you can add more fibers. As I'm doing this, I'm also exposing the white again. So you can um, get the final shape done first. So if it, if it wants to crease, let it crease for now. Felt it down as I'm doing. And then once it's felt it down and you've got a, a crinkle or a crease in there, then you just add more wool over the top so to um, even that out again because unlike with humans you can cover up cracks quite su successfully permanently even so um, you can just lay the wool over the top and make it all disappear it's, maybe you also didn't like the color underneath so you can you can actually still change your mind in in terms of what color you want it to be you can also needle felt faces into this pumpkin so this is another reason to watch how to make it on a small scale pumpkin because then you can do it on a large scale pumpkin and it's around it's around this time where you would um put um, a face on on a pumpkin so um, make sure you do watch on the saturday of how to make pumpkins with faces um, on over on Facebook, and that is Needle Felting UK. Go find the original Needle Felting UK um, page, and on there, I'm sure you will get a link to the group 
for the um, you have to join the group. Um, there's there's sort of no major requirement to do that other than you just need to love needle felting, and um, and be kind and courteous. All the all the sort of normal group rules that um, most people ask you to adhere to. And once you've um, finished your shape, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw the um, the seams in there. Now you can do this with um, another color other than green, so you can just use a contrasting color or you don't need to use a color at all. But what I'm doing is I'm teasing some wool, some green wool, so that it becomes nice and long. I'm teasing it without tearing it, I'm teasing it. And I'm gonna start here at the top and I'm just gonna fasten it on at the top. You can do this with a single needle. Just get it fastened on here at the top. At this point, um, pumpkins often look like oranges, but they do change quite quickly into your pumpkin shape. And I'm, if you can reach it to the bottom, then reach it to the bottom and fasten it on as well. But if you can't, then don't worry. Um, just felt along the shape now so that you are starting to make a real crease into it. And for that, I'm going to go to my two um, needle felting tool because I can line this up and get a nice strong line going here or just use your coarse felting needle, single needle, or maybe hold two needles side by side in your hand. I've done that too. And felt this into the pumpkin so that you get that indentation. So one part of my pumpkin is slightly softer than the other part, but that's fine. No pumpkin is perfect. You get, they, they grow as they like, and um, that's just how it is. And so actually, if you want to do a perfect pumpkin, then, um, then you have to get the perfect shape right. But if you have some bits that are softer there, then just go with it. Um, that's what I do anyway. So now you're going to make more of these because you're going to work your way all around the pumpkin making, I'd say about five to seven of these grooves. So you can see, um, you can see that that is now made a dent. It's like a bottom cheek there now, two bottom cheeks. And then you start at the top and you work your way around. Eventually what we're going to do is this will become a dip. If you look at this pumpkin here, it will become a dip here. So it will dip in and you have sort of quite a large area of green once we've attached the stalk, but we'll get to that in a minute. So let's just have another look what's happening here on, um, on um, the chat. Let's see who else is here talking. Uh, Sorry, I'm just trying to find the place where I was before I um, stopped earlier. Oh, so Vampire Venom says, I may have failed uni some years ago, but I would never have been happy as a research scientist. Well, do you know, I wouldn't even use the word failed because I don't think there are failures in life. You just, you just do something for a bit and then you move on. And I all, I'm a great believer that we often don't pay enough attention to the process that we we're such end taskers um that's what that's what we've become as adults as if you're a child when you were when you were a child um you didn't end tasking wasn't really there children don't do that they just they just literally do it because they want to do it now and they don't so much think about what happens in the end and they don't care either um so i always like giving that example and that made me realize how much children are in the now and they just do it because they enjoy doing it now and that's what i want you to do about needle felting as well and um so my daughter she um she got some wool and some yarn she was like only little they my all my children um um, grew up learning to knit and crochet and all the rest of it and um, she must have been about six or seven and she had this big ball of wool and she said I'm going to knit a big blanket and I thought wow that's a big job because um, I didn't think she would have this this sort of like really sit day after day after day and just knit and I said okay fine you knit and then about an hour later or so I said oh what happened to your blanket and she said I changed my mind it's now a teddy bear scarf and I just I just love that about children that actually you know she didn't say oh 
I I failed at it. She didn't. She just said, oh, I'll just change my mind. It's now a teddy bear scarf. And it's it's that we put so much pressure on ourselves. It's when, when people always say, I can't start a new project. I've got to finish the other one. But maybe the one that you started had already served its purpose in that you you were happy while you were doing it. And if it doesn't, if it doesn't make you happy anymore, why persist? Why do we do this to ourselves? Why do we have to do that? No, I can't do anything else. I've got to finish this first. Says who? There is no craft police, guys. I keep saying it. Nobody's going to knock on the door because you sneakily started another project and you hadn't finished the first one and will say, excuse me, madam, I'm going to have to give you a fine now because you're not allowed to start something new unless you finish the other one. So what if you've got 10 unfinished projects sitting around? One day, they will get finished. Trust me. You might you might not be around to see it, but they will get finished. It's not like when my mum died, I've got in the attic, I've got lots and lots of her started cardigans, baby cardigans. One day I'll finish them, maybe for my grandchildren. Who knows? Um, but yeah, my mum was very much like that. She started, she had so many projects on the go and she just always, she didn't enjoy it anymore. She just started something else. So I'm on my second stripe here now. Whilst you're working on Stripe, it doesn't stop you from um, shaping the bits in between still. So this is an ongoing project of going over what you've already done again. It's one thing that I always say during the workshops. It's so different needle felting from any other crafts because you are... You're constantly revisiting something that you think you've actually ticked off and you've done. Um, unlike if you say you knit a jumper, you wouldn't dream of knitting a bit of the sleeve and then suddenly going to another part and then doing a bit of the back and then doing another part up at the top of the back and then a bit down at the bottom. But that's what needle felting is like. You're co constantly going um, over areas that um, you had already maybe thought oh that looks nice now I'm not going there again then you've got to go over there again because um because something has changed in the meantime so it is it is an, an constantly ongoing project that you're doing with needle felting until the very end when at some point you think I am finished now but some people never finish and um, there's a, um, another story that I can tell you. I used to ha run a knitting group and I had a, a, a shop and there was one lady and this is absolutely true. She only ever had one ball of wool and she knitted it up and then she undid it and then she knitted it up again. That's all she did. Never, there was never an end to it. It never became anything other than she just knitted the same yarn over and over. And I think that's amazing because sometimes it's not just about getting something that you've done sometimes by the time you've done it you've actually exhausted everything that you wanted to do with it and then you just um, move on to something else so I think it's um yeah we can be all very philosophical about it and of course I'm who am I to say you know I do everything to finish it but I, I will be honest that sometimes I, I love the process so much that um I want to do it all over again. It doesn't, it's not always, but sometimes I really do. And of course, there's nothing wrong with, ma with making something and looking at it over and over, over for hours and hours and hours and just being really happy that you've done it. Oh, I was meant to use my two needles, wasn't I? I was wondering why that one seam was staying fat. So use your, um, use a mixed wool. You can mix wool as well. Sometimes when you uh, felt down really hard in an area, um, the white wool will shine through again. I actually quite like the effect that it creates, but if it doesn't um, fill you with much joy, then just cover it up with a little bit of the, um, the wool that you use to cover up the pumpkin and go over it again. So I'm still working really hard on my pumpkin. Some bits are a bit softer, but I'm really, I'm beginning to really like how this looks. So keep going with the green. You could have, I could have used maybe sort of a darker color um, as well. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be any color. You can just felt um, seams um, into the pumpkin by just stabbing the needle. It doesn't have to be colored in at all. It looks just as nice when, when there's just sort of grooves in there. And um, if the wool doesn't quite reach, then just go along for as far as it does and then add another little strand onto it. So secure it at the top, still the same thing. The top is getting really firm because I'm every time I'm starting with a new seam, I'm having to felt really hard into it. 
and fasten it at the bottom if you can and then just go in a straight line so I'm on my fourth stripe now so five to seven I said I'll probably have to do I don't know what one two more I'm gonna be I'm probably gonna do six now so I've got two more to add in there and then that will be the seam stabbing done um, so what else are people talking about um, So another positive um, from a negative uh, is that you are never lost walking or driving. You just don't know exactly where you are and about to go on a new, new adventure. Nice one, Catherine. Oh, yeah, I like that too. I think sometimes we can get a little bit panicky about that too. But um, yes, as long as you're not lost, like seriously lost, I guess. <laughs> like run out of water and food. That would be terrible. Um I one of the things that I've I always say to me to myself when when things are tough I always think if you if you haven't got the downs you can't appreciate the ups you need the downs otherwise you never know you if you're in a constant up you just don't know what um that you are in an up because you would only know that you're in an up if you also experience the downs so that's what I um often say to myself when I when things are going not so good I think well you've got to have those times because then when the then the good times are coming you really do appreciate them that's another one turning a negative into a positive um and we're all doing this because it was a uh, think positive day yesterday so um we yeah sometimes it's good to be a little bit philosophical and think about that not everything is absolutely um rubbish right two more two more the race is on what um right Let's speed this up a bit if i can i might just um, make that my last one and then go move on to the stalk and then maybe add the last one on at, at the very end just so that we get to the stalk and the curly bits there's not much more to do now um, I'll stab away at this one. If you're using two needles, then you can literally hold them side by side. So instead of have just having one needle, I, sh I show it on the overhead camera and you can see it better. You can even use three needles. So I'm holding, I've got them here. I, I'd line them up side by side and then I just use them as if as if it's one needle and you just stab into it. Sometimes they sort of need realigning again. You'll get the hang of it eventually. And that works really well as well. So you can make your own multi-tool by just using your fingers to hold the needles in that way. Um, but as I have got my nice powerful two needles in a three needle tool already to stab, I might as well use it. Okay, um, so remember to get your witch pack because you've just about got time to get that before next week, Tuesday. Um, we The witch pack is, is, is been very, very popular. I think we'll have quite a nice full house for um, the Tuesday and Thursday live streams unless people have just bought it because they want to make it themselves. I'm just going to add another stripe. I think I, I couldn't live if there was a stripe missing now. And um, and definitely um, get ready for your for your toadstool pack as well, and then we we'll, we will let you know when the hedgehog is ready for you to to get. And um, and then we'll make some more nice autumnal decorations together. <clears throat> there we go. Um, let's see. Who else? Oh, Pam is in the house. Hi, Pam. Hope you're okay. I heard that you started on the puppy at um, the weekend. I think Sophie was um, there um, with you. I was at a competition for my daughter, which was absolutely nerve-wracking. I'm, I'm, I'm sure that I'm feeling a little bit under the weather because I've, I've been, my adrenaline has been going absolutely crazy. And um, yeah, it's just nothing more painful than to watch your child. Well, she's not child. She's an adult now, um, but she's still my child. Compete and put everything into it. 
it that um that there is it's just oh it's so anti what's the word um it's it's not very it's against all mom's intuitions and and instincts because you all you want to do is just sweep her off and say oh let's just forget of this let's just go home and be cozy but yeah it's absolutely amazing what she's um what she's done so that's where I was on Sunday and then Sophie I think so Pam does um on Sundays she often features our makers boxes as a as a live stream that she makes it from the box often she does her own thing which we love because you can do your own thing you don't have to follow any of our instructions um that's absolutely fine by us right I have now finished with the stripey bits on my pumpkin now I'm going to flatten the base even a little bit more with my super duper multi um, tool here the prim multi tool so that's what it looks like at the base now I might just put a bit more of a sort of a seam into there mixing a bit of wool covering that area up a bit more it's quite slapdash when you work on larger projects you can be a bit more slapdash covering a larger area there and now I've got to get the top nice and firm and I really want it to have a dimple in there because that dimple is perfect for the stalk for the stalk to sit on now there are still squidgier bits of my pumpkin um, some are squidgier than others you can still work on that it doesn't all have to be done before you um, have put all the parts onto it but he's definitely nice and he's getting firmer and so now I'm going to show you how to make the stalk you take some of your green wool let's do this overhead take some of the green wool this is sort of pretty much standard now of how to make a sausage shape that you're going to attach so it could be a leg onto an animal but um, here it is a stalk onto a pumpkin you flatten this out fold it in half so you've got a neat edge here at the top and then you you roll the ends in or fold the ends in so that you get a nice neat sausage the um the, this is still the this is still the top with a folded edge then you lay this down take your needle secure the shape by just stabbing into the wispy um, rolled up ends so now you've got a shape um, you keep these ends wispy you don't stab into them they're quite handy because you can, you can hold on to them and I'm going to use my multi-tool just to speed things up you just stab along the stalk and you need to keep turning it because you don't want you don't want it to be flat you want it to be round you can reduce this in size quite a lot stab into the top as well stab all over um, depending how big you want this to be it could be a much smaller stalk but as long as you've got air in your make you can um, reduce the size just stab the needle in and out as you can stab it at an angle as long as you come out the same way that's the golden rule of needle felting the needle goes in exactly the same way as it comes out um, that way you keep your needle, needle safe um, and you don't put any pressure on them and they don't break so keep stabbing your stalk until it's nice and firm and then all you need to do is um, take it use these wispy fibers as the base so broaden them out so you've got a almost like a little a little um, platform there and um, that sits on top of the pumpkin like that and because the pumpkin has got sort of naturally um, an area there that is green you can even leave these fibers to spread out you can tease them off if there's too many and then all you're going to do is you're going to felt that stalk onto the pumpkin by stabbing first of all really close into the um, side of the stalk all around and then you can let the uh, the green fibers spill out if you don't want the fibers to spill out then you um, you would first of all not have as many and secondly you really really stab very close to the base and that usually pulls these fibers in um, if they still spill out then you can always cover it at the end again with um, the color that you want it to be so I'm just getting that felt it down letting a bit of the green spill out you can get a neater edge by stabbing sort of slightly at an angle into it rather than letting it fizzle over the pumpkin and that way you attach 
your stalk but at the same time you're also adding this this sort of slightly broader um, base at the top I'm really going hard in here now and if you still want to reduce the size of the stalk you can still stab into it just lay it down um, I haven't mentioned it but by now you know that I'm using our earth friendly felting mat which um, is um, available in all kinds of different sizes if this is one that I'm using as an A4 works really well for a large project we do it in A5 so the half the size of this and then half the size again which is A6 we also have really big ones well this one here which probably won't even fit on the uh, screen it comes packed in there that's a big one that's a big square one and then we sometimes have even the size up from that, but I don't think we've got them in, at the moment. They're easy to cut with scissors as well. So if you want to get a big one and then cut them down yourself for your different purposes, then do so. So I've now added the stalk. My pumpkin is a little bit wonky, which is I quite like. So it's slightly sli leaning over. And then um, in terms of the, um, the vine that's the um, what are they called like tentacles that are sort of coming off you have a choice now to either add green or brown and you don't really need to do much with these what I will say when you get curls um, it's best to cut them uh, to separate them oh my scissors my nice scissors are here it's better to cut them I'll show you so to to um, to separate them it's better to cut them into them rather than tearing them um, because you're just going to pull the frizz out. So cut your scissors rather than pulling them. And then you get a nice tendrils. That's what it's... Oh, ten, not, not tentacles. Okay. <laughs> well, it could have been worse. I, I, you, I, could, have, I could have said um, the, the test equals word, but I didn't. Um, so anyway, here we go. Ten, tendrils. That's what they're called. Thank you, Emma. What would I do without you? I would make a total fool. So you can have them going all around or wherever you want them to be. And then all you need to do is felt them on, um, in case you were wondering, but I'm sure you weren't. Um, you can be a little bit more sparing with them. I'm being quite generous, um, just so that you can see better, more. And um, obviously you leave them hanging down by the side of the pumpkin maybe tease a few more out going the other way, whichever way. There you go. So um, a wonky a wonky pumpkin with, with lots of scope to even make him a little bit more firmer and, sh and even um, in a different shape. I really like it when they're wonky because they look like they're sort of homegrown. You know, sometimes you even get dimples in them. So this one has got a dimple, very authentic. Um, but if you want to make them a lot more um, perfect than you can, of course, too. You can just use a single color. There's no, there's also no pumpkin police. So go for whatever you want to do. Um, the the finished, the finish of it is still quite squishy. So if you really, really want to make a solid pumpkin, then work on the on the core a lot more. And I think it's time to um, draw a winner. So Emma, go for it. Um, Emma or um, I think it might be Hannah watching on Thursday I, I keep saying that and then it's not Hannah it might be Sophie who knows um, whoever's um, there on Thursday go ahead and draw a winner now and I can only announce the one on, on Tuesday so um, whilst that is happening I'll just read a few more ill children and rain means blanket dens in the living room with snuggles and homemade chocolate brownies still warm to be um, helped to help change a negative into a positive do you know i remember my children um they used to sit when when because i had a shop and i had to take them with me i used to have a, a big carton box uh, by the counter so nobody knew they were there and they were sitting in the box with a blanket and a book and some snacks and they were just no they didn't want to be away from me they just wanted to be there and i couldn't be at home so that was that's that's what it was. Right, so we've got a winner. Emma has just whispered it in my ear. Whoever that the person is on, 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 Tuesday, on Thursday, that will be somebody else. But today's winner is Melanie T. Well done, Melanie. You get yourself um, a hoggy, a whole hoggy pack that makes the whole hoggy family, all five of them, including Homer, Holly, Huey and Heather. Um, Homer's wife and then we've got the little baby who's nameless but you can I'm sure you can give it a name 
Um, we do have a live stream tutorial of how to make them as well. From If you look at last year's, uh, just before Christmas, then you can uh, follow it if the instructions aren't um, aren't enough or maybe you like to follow more live streams, then you can do so. And of course, these packs are available to buy on our website as well. Right, that's um, exactly our hour gone now. Um, got two pumpkins now, one with a friend. And um, yeah, there you go. Still got lots of wool left from our pumpkin pack. No more core wool, but definitely use the wool um, to make, either just get more core wool, then you have a best best way of making lots more, or use the, the wool as it is to make um, tiddly little pumpkins like that, for example. And I will just say that I think this, this puppy um, is very naughty because he's caught one of my pumpkins and he's been playing with it, rolling around. And um, um, yeah, so watch out, watch out. Dogs love these woolly, woolly creations. Um, and um, yeah, I'm really, really pleased with my pumpkins. So I'm hope, I hope that I see lots of them and we all see lots of them on Every Wanna Maker on our Facebook page uh, where you can share them and we would love to see them. That's all from me today. Take care, everybody. And um, I will see you next week with the little witch. <laughs> nice one. Bye.